Greetings, everyone. This is Noel, your host of the Proletariat Politics brand new show on YouTube. Episode one. Here we go. <laughs> I had recorded a uh, sort of an episode zero. Uh, when was that? Like about a week ago, maybe. But uh, with all the crazy stuff going on in the news right now, it seems like a good time for uh, episode one. So, I'm not really using a script here. I'm just sort of going off the cuff here, but, uh, I mean, it's sort of been a couple days since the, uh, the incident that happened at the, uh, Capitol building in Washington, D.C. I've had some time to sort of reflect on it a bit, sort of organize my thoughts more about what's been going on. I think the the main thing that's kind of crazy to me about all of this is like sort of the rhetoric on the right because I don't really follow a lot of conservative anything on social media or anything like that so like a lot of people today I'm sort of in my own echo chamber of m most of my friends are leftists and uh, I would say people my age in general uh, don't necessarily identify with either the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. Uh, I think we're all sort of just general leftists. Um, some some of my the people in my circle are more quote unquote radicalized than than others. Uh, I have friends that are that identify as communists. Uh, is sort of a dirty word in, in today's political political landscape, I guess. But I think communism has its uh, has its pluses and minuses. I think it would be a lot better than the current system. But uh, I consider myself an anarchist. I think that we've come too far down this road of of uh, capitalism to turn back and while I would like to see some sort of utopia eventually it's just not gonna happen so uh, to, I think to be an anarchist in today's world is sort of a bit silly it's a bit self-indulgent like uh, I think that regardless of what your personal politics are that we can make strides towards making the world a better place um, regardless of what you s what political party you associate with or what what you consider yourself to be so but I don't know just the stuff I've been seeing on social media from the right is like it's pretty scary to me like uh, follow this person uh, on social media who uh, I don't know I guess they're a conservative of some kind but they just like the, the type of memes and stuff that they post is very like bizarre to me like I've been sort of like doing a little bit of research into this uh, just to have something to something concrete to talk about on this first episode rather than just rambling but uh, I was looking a little bit into this character that goes by L. Lynn Wood I believe is his name he was an attorney I guess I don't know if he's still an attorney but he was uh, like an injury lawyer of some kind I'm not sure like exactly how respected he is amongst his peers but uh just knowing what I know about, like, law, um, seems like injury lawyers are 
almost like the bottom of the barrel when it comes to practicing law. Like you're basically like considered an ambulance chaser if you if you're an injury lawyer. Like you're you're essentially capitalizing on the suffering of others by trying to squeeze money out of people when they're at their lowest point. But that's a digression that we don't need to get into right now. But uh, this Ellen Wood character is a real. I'd say, like, when it comes to inciting violence from the right, like, especially the far right, I think he's, like, at the top of the, the list of people that are calling for violence on social media. Like, uh, obviously, Trump just got basically banned from almost every platform for inciting violence, and a lot of people on the right are, like, crying about that, like, oh, like, censorship, free speech. But, uh, I don't think this really falls under f free speech. Uh, first of all, there's really no such thing as free speech. Uh, as George Carlin said, we really don't have any rights. Uh, we only have whatever rights the uh, elite are willing to give us at any given moment. Like, they're the ones in control. They're, they're the ones that are calling the shots. So, but, uh, when it comes to the president of the free world, the United States of America, like you have some, some, some semblance of responsibility to, um, I don't know, adhere to the truth, to, to abide by some form of logic. But obviously, logic went out the window in this country a long time ago. Like we haven't been operating on that for for quite a while. So sort of par for the course for our president to be telling people to start riots on social media like it's just another another thing on a long list of atrocities committed by the right uh, over the past what 40 50 years and you can even go farther back than that like you go back to slave times and not much has really changed since the days of slavery in this country like uh, Obviously, it's no longer in fashion to go out on the streets with your swastika armbands or your Confederate battle flags, but it's, that's what some of the people were doing uh, that that stormed the Capitol building. They basically set up a lynching rope uh, in the National Mall in Washington, and uh, there were battle flags there. There were a lot of interesting flags. Obviously, there were a lot of... Uh, Blue Lives Matter, thin blue line flags, and uh, the typical uh, crap that you see from from the right. Like uh, as as Hassan Piker says, uh, a lot of people that support Trump are basically uh, weebs. Like they like to cosplay and uh, do their little dress up and wave their flags around, and they get real real happy about being able to to dress up in their Trump gear. Uh, which is very funny, but uh, just like this kind of stuff you see from this like L. Lynn Wood character and some of the other like people on the right, uh, like I was reading this other article about former uh, military uh, generals, like really high up generals in the army and other branches of the of the military, who basically are totally like believe in QAnon and Pizzagate and like. A lot of conspiracy theories that have been debunked years ago at this point, like, they fully bought into these very wacky conspiracy theories. Like, I know, I know one of these generals believes that in some sort of uh, thing called Project Kraken or something like that, which I really didn't, like, look too far into that just because... I don't like looking into the far right conspiracy stuff too much because because it's a I consider it an intellectual waste of time. Like it's just gonna rot my brain. I have other more important things to look into, but uh, just the fact that these these generals that are that are wielding vast amounts of power, like our military is the most advanced, highly funded military in the world, and the people that <coughs> are in uh, leadership positions. Uh, in in the military are like these are all retired generals but they're all batshit crazy like they're just nuts and 
anyone who seriously believes in like QAnon and like I'd even go like I'd even lump it in with like flat earth and shit like that like the whole space is fake conspiracy theory like anything like that like the 5G towers are poisoning us and the COVID vaccine has trackers in it like anyone who believes in that type of conspiracy theory is just fucking too far gone like they they obviously lost touch with reality a long time ago like how gullible do you have to really be to buy into something that's so easy to disprove that sort of theory like plus like 5g isn't even like rolled out to most major cities yet so like i don't think it really has the capability of poisoning very many people especially like people in rural areas like they're not going to install a 5g tower in your shitty backwater southern town uh it's just not uh lucrative enough for them but uh I don't know, just like a lot of these memes I see, like, and and Twitter posts from people on the right, like, are very odd. Like, I've seen a lot of stuff from this L. Lynn Wood character basically saying that there's going to be, like, a planned takedown of the, of the power grid in the United States and that that's going to be the way that Trump, like, seizes power and that all these people are hoping that, that Trump does some sort of coup to stay in power for the next four years like because because he was quote unquote robbed of the of the presidency even though he lost fair and square like just like there's so many like all these things are like connected like the these people believe that the voting machines were were like hacked or rigged in some way like it's just like how how uh how far back would you have to go in time to to set up these voting machines that are rigged and I don't know it's just so easy to disprove there there's another story of uh, some sheriff who he, he's a member of a this weird militia I don't know exactly what the point of the militia is but he uh, he thought that somebody was tampering with one of the voting machines and that they had a, a van full of uh, full of votes for Trump that they were stealing or something or something to that effect so the the sheriff uh, does like this citizen's arrest because he's a former sheriff he's not an active duty sheriff he does a citizen's arrest on this HVAC worker he turned out to be an HVAC worker and there's nothing in his van except HVAC equipment and he really has nothing to do with the voting machine so just like how paranoid do you have to be to think that some HVAC guy is is like some criminal mastermind who's rigging the fucking voting machines it's just so stupid <laughs> huh, that one still makes me laugh but uh I don't know just like the type of people that you even saw going to storm the capitol building are just like the worst rejects from like I don't know like it seems like they they were the, the type of people that would have liked to be in drama club in high school but they didn't have the the requisite requisite talent or charisma so they just like now in in adulthood they're acting out these fantasies they have where they play dress up and like the uh the MAGA Viking slash shaman guy with the, with the like, I don't know, is it a, is it a buffalo headdress? I don't know exactly what, what that is, but just that guy. That guy's a clown. I, I wish I could fight that guy 1v1. <laughs> that guy pisses me off. But, uh, I don't know. Just, it's been chaos the past few days, uh, still sort of unsure what the future holds like is there going to be an even bigger like attack on Washington by the right uh, when Biden actually takes office like what exactly is going to happen next like anything seems possible at this point kind of seems like the world's going to shit right now like I was reading some other article today about a sinkhole that opened up in I think Italy somewhere next to a hospital and they had to 
evacuate some of the people <laughs> from the hospital because uh, it was a 22,000 square foot sinkhole opened up randomly next to this hospital. But that kind of seems like kind of it would be kind of common in Italy just because like it's a uh, it's bordered by the ocean on, on so many sides, and uh, there's a lot of cities that are, like, sort of partially underwater already, like, like, is it Venice, like, sort of, kind of, uh, there's, like, a river running through the city and stuff, so it seems like they're kind of asking to be, to be flooded and for sinkholes to open up, because they're living too close to the coastline and stuff, but I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'm just, the stuff I see from, like, right-wing social media and, and even mainstream, like, not even far-right, but just mainstream right-wing people, the, the memes they've been posting are very weird, like, they're, they're gearing up for a civil war, like, you're really ready to fight a civil war just because your president lost fair and square, like, he lost in the election, so... Like, our original Civil War was actually for a good reason. We had to stop the uh, pieces of shit that were that thought it was okay to own another human being. Like, that was actually for a good reason. Uh, all these, all the people in the South didn't want to give up their slaves, so we had to, we had to go show them what was what, and we, uh, we, we whooped their, uh, their Southern asses. And now, uh, now they're ready to fight a war. Just because uh, Donald Trump, <laughs> their favorite guy, lost fair and square. And they're, they're not willing to accept reality. Like, there's always this like sort of rhetoric on social media nowadays after a presidential election where everyone's, everyone on like the quote-unquote losing side is sort of like depressed that their candidate lost, but... This is the craziest I've ever seen it in my lifetime. Like, you're so upset about the outcome of this election that you're you're gearing up for some sort of civil war, some sort of apocalypse to happen. Like, I've, I've been seeing a lot of these memes that say stuff like, uh, I saw one that said Trump had been flown on Air Force One to some some military base in Texas, and that's where he's planning to to stage his revolution from. <laughs> But, uh, it's just all very strange, like, we, there were so many red flags about Trump, and everyone was, like, saying, like, I think a lot of the people that voted for Trump were like, oh, well, he's not part of the political establishment, so maybe he'll be something different, like, but if you're still supporting Trump right now on January 10th, 2021, I think there's there's something there's some sort of screw loose in your head like the pussy grabbing and all the stuff that Trump did like before he became president like that that came to light like he fucks porn stars, he likes to grab pussies and I don't know, he's just obviously a very, like, shitty person, like, and, uh, I don't know, not, not that there's anything wrong with, like, fucking porn stars, I support that, uh, but, uh, there were so many red flags that Trump was not gonna be a good president, and, I don't know, I, I could sort of forgive, like, the people that voted for him, cause, like, yeah, he's, he's not part of the, the, the deep state, he's, He's going to fight back against the deep state. <laughs> but uh, that was obviously not the case. Um, I just don't... I can't really wrap my mind around people that are still supporting Trump right now in light of everything that's happened. Like, It's just... It makes you kind of lose hope in humanity a little bit. Like... <laughs> It sort of just makes me think about, like, all the wars that we've fought in the history of this country. Like, I, I don't believe in war. I don't think anything really justifies going to war. But there have been some legitimate wars. Like, we had to stop the Nazis. We had to stop the slave owners. Um, I, think, uh, I think we're heavily 
the U.S. is heavily responsible for what happened in, in World War II and what happened to the Jews that died because we got involved in the war very late. Like, we should have intervened a lot sooner and stopped a lot of the the murder that Hitler was doing. And slavery should have never been legal in this country in the first place, but... This is an imperfect world, and uh, sometimes you have to go fight a war to stop uh, evil pieces of shit that are uh, that are taking over. So, but uh, nowadays, like in my lifetime and even before that, all these wars are just they're very obvious money making schemes by the elite. Like you look at nine eleven and the war, the the global war on terror and uh, the war on drugs and uh, just like pretty much every war from Vietnam forward has just been to make money for for the stockholders and to boost the economy like uh, there's no there hasn't been a valid reason for war in a very long time and war has sort of lost its uh, the small shreds of honor that could be found in war like uh, it used to be that you'd have to physically go out onto a battlefield and face down another man and fight to the death with that with that man and look him in the eye while you were fighting him. But now there's drones and there's self-driving cars that they can just put a machine gun turret in the self-driving car and have it go assassinate somebody. They can just kill you by a drone strike and... Uh, there's no honor in war anymore. I think we should just uh, bring back the uh, the gladiators, bring back the Colosseum, and just uh, just have people fight to the death. Like you may think, you may call that barbaric, but uh, it's it's a lot more uh, humane than uh, sending a drone to kill a bunch of poor people, bunch a bunch of poor brown people in the Middle East. Uh, that's uh, inhumane. That's barbaric. Uh, the Coliseum at least had some sort of honor like you you could uh you could get cheered on by the crowd and sort of uh become a hero of the people but uh there's no uh there's no heroic drone pilots uh there's no heroic guy who operates the uh robot in a self driving car that has a machine gun mounted on it. That guy's not a hero. That guy's a fucking nerd. That guy's a piece of shit. Fuck that guy. If you're a drone operator, if you uh, if you help to kill random people in the Middle East that have done nothing wrong, then you're the problem. But uh, I think maybe the Coliseum would solve a lot of these problems. Like uh, I could have my little fantasy of going into a one versus one fight against the uh the maga viking shaman guy um we could we could have maybe like ted cruz go up against like jeb bush we could have a lot of entertaining fights in the coliseum it doesn't have to be to the death but i think it should be uh it would solve a lot of the problems uh that we're facing with social media you can say a lot of crap on social media and I can make my YouTube videos uh, making fun of people on the right, but I think we should uh, take it a, a step further and bring this out into the real world. Like, uh, if you really want to fight this civil war for Trump, uh, put your money where your mouth is and uh, step into the Coliseum with uh, with with some people and uh, see if you still uh, feel like uh, Trump is is worth dying for and fighting for. Because uh, a lot of people died in that that capital, uh, the Capitol building incident recently, and uh, honestly, uh, I have zero zero pity, zero remorse for those people because they they took their own they took their life in their own hands when they stormed the Capitol. I I kind of feel bad for the officer that got beaten to death. Um, it's very it's a very fitting for uh, 2021 to uh, have. The people that supposedly believe in blue lives matter, as if there is a such a thing as a blue life. Like, uh, it's a blue uniform, it's not a blue life. You don't have blue skin, you can take your fucking uniform off. 
like uh, like the like Aldo said in Inglorious Bastards, uh, you you have that that fancy Nazi uniform that you can just take off whenever you want. You shouldn't be allowed to do that. If you're a Nazi, you should be required to wear your swastika at all times. But uh, in the age of social media, you can conveniently take off your swastika and your KKK hood uh, whenever you want. And uh, officers can do the same thing. Police officers can take off their uniform at the end of the day and pretend to just be a regular person. Um, but uh, I still feel bad for that guy that got beaten to death. Uh, so much for Blue Lives Matter, I guess. Uh, that guy's that guy's blue life didn't matter very much to those Trump supporters. His life meant very little to them, obviously, as they beat him to death uh, brutally with a fire extinguisher. So, I guess, uh, I guess the whole Blue Lives Matter is more of a performative art piece. Here, it's performance art. You're really just—it's just a virtue signal. You really, really don't give a shit about police. If you cared about police, then you'd be concerned about how. Um, there are more police committing suicide every day than there are uh, police killings. The police are so um, mentally uh, unprepared for their own jobs that they're killing themselves at astounding rates every single day. If you really cared about police, then you'd be concerned about that. You'd be concerned about the returning veterans that, that are also uh, committing suicide at, at record rates every day in this country. But uh, you really don't care about those troops or those police officers. You just you just want to do your virtue signal on social media and and prove how uh, righteous you are. But at the end of the day, uh, you you go in and and support Trump to the point where you you beat an innocent police officer to death. Which uh, it's also a kind of a misnomer to call a police officer innocent because uh, I think. Uh, Police are part of the problem as well. Um, the prison industrial complex uh, is just another part of the uh, the military industrial complex and all the other systems of power in this country that are unjust. Um, abolish police, abolish prisons, abolish the government, abolish all forms of leadership and authority we don't need any leaders or th or gods or kings we just need each other and it's a little bit of freedom to do what we want instead of instead of working for a boss from nine to five and pissing away the best years of your life on a job that you hate and uh, working for someone else making money for a boss when you should be getting the money Profits are the unpaid wages of the working class. But uh, I think that's an appropriate first episode. That's really all I wanted to say. Just wanted to sort of comment on the absurdity of this whole Capitol building incident and uh, just sort of looking ahead to see what's next because uh, it's not over yet. And. Uh, We'll see what the next four years brings, if uh, the, the Biden presidency can undo some of the damage that Trump did while he was in office. But uh, I have to say that I'm not really uh, very optimistic about that because the Democrats are just as shitty as Republicans in my view. Anarchism is the only way, friends. Anarchism is the way, comrades. It's the way forward to a better future. But uh, also, uh, I always like to make this joke when people ask about what my political affiliation is. Uh, anarchism is a cool club because there's no annoying forms to fill out. There's no uh, official membership roles. You just gotta, you just gotta uh, decide that uh, you want to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. You just gotta uh, put away all your all your flags there's no anarchist flags I like to uh, I like the hammer and sickle though that's a powerful symbol I like the Che Guevara as well the uh, the chairman Mao I think uh, 
I think those are powerful symbols that we can uh, rally behind. But uh, at the end of the day, symbols and that's just another form of oppression, man. And uh, like I said, no masters, no kings, no authority figures, no cops, none of that. We don't need any of them. We just need each other. That's all we need, brothers. Anarchism is the only way. But yeah, that's episode one. The uh, proletariat politics. That's what we're calling this show. I'm going to try to do it once a week, but uh, I have a very grueling school schedule that's ramping up here in the next few days, so I can't 100% promise that uh be able to stick to the once per week episode thing, but uh, I'm going to try my best. And uh, if you know me... If, uh, all my social media is out there. It's easy to find. and uh, So feel free to hold me accountable. Call me out if I'm not sticking to the once per week thing. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And I, as I always say in my blog, uh, stay gold. Stay gold, pony boy. Stay gold.